So my philosophy of teaching Chinese, uh, well, it's a very interesting uh, process because when I started, I knew one method, and uh, I thought that was the best in the world uh, to do drill instruction, you know, like drill the students all the time, make them repeat. But throughout the years, I realized uh, they can say certain things, but they could not have a conversation. So they can do well in tests. That doesn't mean they can go out and have a conversation. So I think I've evolved. And I, right now, I think the main uh, philosophy for me is to have a welcoming environment to help students to speak the language, not to talk about the language. Um, so that's my current ph philosophical idea. So everything I do is to uh, carry this out and create an environment for this philosophy. So, um, so I did a lot uh, right for the past few years. I start, started changing, and I did a lot. Um, they said the, uh, scaffold, scaffolding uh, instructions and very student-centered instruction. I used to be very teacher-centered. It's very efficient. Don't get me wrong. It's very effective too. You keep the uh, you kept the students on their toes. They have to, you know, go to back right away. But really, and I got this evaluation one year. And they say, "Oh, the teacher is, in, is incredible. She was so good." But I wish I can learn how to speak. I was like, "What does that mean?" And you you spoke well. And I realized he was doing the drill pattern. He can say certain sentence when I ask him to say it and repeat after me, but have him to have a natural conversation was really difficult. So that dawned on me, I start changing. And I try to uh, attend conference and workshop, not related to just teaching Chinese, more like um, how to educate people, <laughs> more education and how to uh, create an environment for all students to feel safe. So I adapt those philosophy in my course to, so my, my philosophy is a welcoming, welcoming environment. That means uh, building a community for students to feel very safe to speak the language in this community. They're not afraid to make mistakes and they're, they always volunteer uh, their opinions. That's my goal, the first step. Mm -hmm. uh, as I said, my philosophy is to create a, a welcoming environment, to build a community. So, for example, I um, recently, uh, two years ago, I went to a workshop called Responsive Classroom. Uh, responsive, uh, responsive Classroom is geared to a K-12. It's talking about, it's more, it's more treating the younger kids, try to get rid of the behavior issue. I don't need to do it in my classroom, but I think their strategy there is actually works. First thing they do is building community. So for example, I do the first week of my course, and these are heritage learners, they already know how to speak, but they are so embarrassed with them because they will tell me my pronunciation is bad, I don't speak to anybody else, only to my parents, I don't want to speak in the classroom. So basically, I do the greeting, the very easy things they're comfortable with. For instance, they talk about their name, what their major. They can all speak these you know, in Chinese. So what I do is the first day like that. And then start it, I build into a routine. So every class, I spend five to 10 minutes every day. We call greet every class, not every day. We don't have an everyday class, called greeting. Basically. You, I ask everybody to write their name on the car. So I collect the car. I put a car in the middle of the classroom. So one student, I will start because I need to model what it means. So I will pick up a student's car. For instance, I say, oh, Sarah Lin, okay. And I call her in her Chinese name. And I will start saying, how are you today? You know, what did you do last night? Stuff like that, daily life things. And then I ask the student, did you see what I did? So follow my model and come here, pick up car, greet your classmates. So every day I do this. Uh, I think after two weeks, everybody knows everybody's name. And while greeting this is not just simple greeting because you have a 
natural conversation when you say, "Oh, I went to bed really late last night," and people will say, "Why?" You know that. So, so I started very structured. For instance, just everybody's just say very limited things, and then I will say, "Okay." So Sarah says she went to bed really late last night. Do you guys want to know why? You know, all in Chinese. So they will start asking. So I build on that difficulty. So、um, the weekend, the Monday class is really fun. They love it because you can talk about your weekend. So kids here, they did all kinds of activity during the weekend. So they're so interested in finding out what their classmate did because they might not know each other. A、uh, summer took classes together, so they were complaining same course together in the classroom. Many teachers probably think it's a waste of time. It's you know really, you know why are you talking about that? But I think it's through this you build a community. So the moment they walk into the classroom after one month, they're this they the you know they could have a test before the Chinese class. The moment they walk into, because of this greeting. Rituals. They have to switch their gear into speaking Chinese right away, and they because you're you're having a conversation, so you really need to engage your classmates. So that's what I mean, building a community. They feel so freely can talk about anything they could, and they don't know the words. They will ask me, "How do you say this?" You know, this is what I'm doing right now. It's really, blah blah blah. So and people really want to find out. And I add another component after a few weeks、um, is to by the time now they already know each other's name, so I like to every lesson I ask them to write an essay. I give them a topic to write an essay. So I will ask them, for instance, I'll say、um, we talk about、uh, family. So our topic is Chinese family. So I want them to go home to write about. Uh, maybe、uh, Italian family or Spanish family. So the structure model on the textbook. So nobody knows what other students were writing about, right? So this time we call sharing. So that sharing part is talk about your what did you write. So some students, oh, I I wrote about Spanish family, and I said, what was that? Tell us. Not just the title. What's the content about? So they talk about. Everybody has a chance to talk about quickly, and then I said, "Oh, this is very interesting." So, so student will, you know, automatically, automatically, naturally, just ask, "Why did you pick this topic?" It's so. And did you know any Spanish people? You know, so the natural conversation just flow. So it get into a, a routine. So every time they come to my classroom, they know. There's. Should speak Chinese, and they should talk about their life, and that's what they're good at. They cannot talk about politics, they cannot talk about、uh, history, but they can talk about themselves. And so, to make them、um, the oral proficiency higher, and they can speak、uh, much better. I remember there's one student after the、uh, Thanksgiving, she came back. She was so excited. She said. Oh, um, uh, Liang 老师 that's how they address me as teacher. And he said, you know, I, um, I, my father had this、uh, friend, and I always call him uncle. He's from China. He doesn't speak any English. So I met him in New York, and、uh, when it was September, I cannot communicate with him at all. So during the Thanksgiving, my home is so far away, so I went to my uncle's place. And I can talk to him, and he kept saying that my Chinese improved. And he said, "Oh my God, it's only two months. I can't believe I can speak the most Chinese, even though I speak Chinese with my parents. I can never speak to anybody." And she just came by so excited, you know, so excited, and then so I feel great. So I know it worked. Yeah, because to her, talking, speaking in Chinese doesn't have to be something she has to think about. You know how do I come up with the first sentence anymore? Because she does that in her in our class every time, so it's very natural for her. And plus, she's you know she actually knows Chinese. She's <laughs> because her background, so she crossed the barrier, be able to speak to other people, which is fantastic.